Uh, hey, everyone. You have finally made it to Dreamforce. This is the last session uh, in the developer theater. So uh, I guess you have attended some of our other talks on some of the security issues in Lightning, Apex, and Visual Force. In this talk, we are going to talk about some of the tools to identify those security issues. So uh, we'll, Vinay and I will be talking about some of the open source solution and some of the in-house tool that could be used to uh, effectively identify some of the issues. So uh, I'm Prashant Kanan. I'm a security engineer from the product security team. Uh, I uh, manage security posture for one of the public-facing public cloud. I do uh, Apex reviews. I also build security tools. Um, hey, everyone. I'm Vinayana Nataraja. I work as a senior product security engineer in the product security team, same as Prashant. Uh, I myself as well uh, manage some internal teams, make sure the product we are shipping out is secure. And also, we do some tooling, not only for us to make our job easier, but also for partners and customers. I guess you have seen this a lot of times. Now you would have accustomed, you, got, you would have got accustomed to this. So Salesforce is a publicly traded company. So don't make any uh, investment decision based on the talk that we are giving today. So uh, Force.com is designed to be uh, flexible and support developer needs. So uh, a developer can add any code on top of it. Uh, I guess most of you are aware of this. Uh, compared to a full stack cloud, the security issues that might arise in a Salesforce uh, cloud environment is very limited. Uh, so if, uh, if a developer writes a poor programming uh, uh, code, I mean, he writes a poor code, then uh, uh, we, have, uh, we, we do a proper security review before any app goes through app exchange. So uh, we do a manual review, and we also use some of these uh, in-house tool to identify those uh, security issues. So if you, have, uh, if you do any development on top of Salesforce platform, uh, this is a pretty important session. So uh, th there are two types of scan. One is uh, source code, and another is uh, runtime scan. In uh, source code analysis, it, does, it blindly looks through your code. It doesn't uh, run the code in the runtime. Uh, Runtime analysis runs the, runs the entire code and then identifies the security issues that hap happens during runtime. So for source code analysis, uh, I'll be talking about uh, source code scanner, which is a cloud-based scanner which we built in-house and runs Chimera in the background. And PMD is an open source solution. Vinay will be here talking about uh, runtime scanners. So first is source code scanner. Uh, source scanner portal is primarily used to scan uh, source code in uh, force.com portal. It's completely cloud-based. There's nothing you need to install from your side. You just need to access the portal, put in the username, and done. You'd get an email with a complete report on what are all the security issues that happen uh, that uh, are there in the code that's in your platform. Uh, it identifies uh, security issues and quality issues. It looks uh, for the code from all the way up to source and sync and see if there's a sanitization uh, in between. Uh, for customers, we allow up to 360,000 lines of uh, code scanned per year per org. And uh, partners can do up to three scans for each security review. After they fail a security review, we reset the scan back to uh, count back to three. So it can identify cross-site scripting, uh, SOC world injection, access control issues, uh, cross-site uh, request forgeries, and uh, arbitrary redirect and overly permissive uh, post message targets. We are continuously updating check marks rules in the background. So you could do a yearly review to make sure you uh, comply with our new security rules. Uh, if you want, you can also have uh, run check marks. If you're doing a, a large-scale development, you can, get, uh, you can contact check marks and get a license and uh, add your own rules. This is a sample rule set for identifying SQL injection. Here we have uh, three strings. We have str, which is the get param, which is the user input. And the second one is uh, passed to a sanitization function. And third one has a string, which is a user control input, and also a string which passed through the sanitization function. So if we see the first and the third are tainted because uh, uh, it, doesn't, it hasn't passed through a sanitizer. 
when we go to execute in the one and three, uh, the user control uh, input goes through the SQL query, and the uh, user can control the query in the runtime. So what is the rule that we write? We have, uh, we have input, which takes the user input here. Uh, CX list input will take the, all the user inputs. And then fix SQL is the sanitization function for SQL here. And then we have a run, which identifies uh, where exactly is the code being consumed. Uh, so we have the result here is like seeing whether the user input passed through a sanitization function or not. If so, then uh, it's good. If not, then it will identify and then uh, add it to the report. It's as simple as that. Uh, in a similar case for cross-site scripting, where uh, if a user input uh, is taken in and then rendered back to the page directly, then uh, it identifies uh, cross-site scripting or uh, any of these other cases as well. So uh, this is for a customer. You have been taking pictures in the past. So this is the most important slide for you. You can, ac uh, you can access this uh, slide through this portal, sfdc.co slash scan. Uh, it land you up in this page. I'll show you a quick access here. <laughs> so uh, this is the portal here. You, uh, for any org that you have, uh, just make sure you have uh, uh, the user has author Apex access or an admin access. Just put in the username. Whatever description you want for the scan that you are doing that year, probably this year, 2017 scan. And then you can just select uh, whether it's uh, security rules or security and quality rules, and then click Scan. That's all you have to do. It's completely cloud-based. Our code will, uh, our background code will fetch your code from your org and uh, identify security issues and send the report to you in a mail within an hour or two based on the queue that's there at the time. So uh, for partners, we have a separate portal. As I told earlier, partners can do up to uh, three scans uh, for each security review. We have a separate portal for them. So uh, for partner portal, make sure you're, you log in through the org ID, which is associated in the, part, uh, in the partner org uh, with Salesforce. And once you sign in, you land up in this page. Here you can sign number of pending scans and completed scans and total available scans. Uh, it shows Pi here because I have two associated orgs. So, uh, so for this org, I have two scans because I have already used one of the scans. And for the other org, I have three scans. Here, make sure you put the username associated with this org. Uh, this by default shows the primary username. But this username could be different from the username associated with this org. Make sure you uh, put the username that's associated with this org and select uh, whatever you want to do, security or quality issues, and then click Submit. And then uh, you'd get a mail once the scan is done. Unlike for the customer portal, for partner portal, you have to come to the portal and download the report here. Uh, here I have done a scan for uh, one of my org. So. So I have uh, a complete uh, HTML, file, HTML file with all the issues I have. Uh, uh, it has identified reflected excesses, lightning API issue. So if you are running uh, lightning API version 40, uh, if you don't use API 40 or uh, API 39, then it will say you have not enabled locker service. Then it will identify those issues. Uh, reflected excesses here. And uh, FLS, if you don't do a field level check or the object level check, and this is more like a quality issues, XSRF. So it's a comprehensive uh, report which, uh, which is generated. And uh, you can, uh, it also has uh, uh, complete references that you can look into. So another one is PMD. PMD is an open source solution. It's a cross-language source code analyzer. Uh, you can write, you can, if you're doing a large-scale development and uh, you uh, want to use uh, an open source solution apart from check marks, you can have uh, PMD. You can integrate PMD to your 
development life cycle and uh, identify you can you can write your own set of rules on top of it our salesforce security engineers have added some rules uh, it, it it does not identify lightning issues uh, yet it identify visual force and uh, uh, apex issues uh, it, it is completely not cloud based like a source code uh, scanner as i mentioned earlier so i have the link here you can access pmd.github.io you can go and download and then uh, uh, try it out so now i'll hand it over to vinay who will talk about runtime scan um, thanks a lot, Prashant. Yep. So we learned about source code analysis. Uh, we learned about the cloud-based scanner we have, uh, where you can submit a username. Or if you're a partner, we have a portal for you where you can go and download reports. Or if, you want, if you're a customer and you want to run uh, scans against your own org, you can use PMD. So you download the tool, run it, and you have the results. Now coming to the runtime scan. Uh, runtime scan, uh, again, it's two, two, we have two uh, solutions. One is the Chimera. Chimera is a cloud-based scan. Um, it is similar to source, scanner, source code scanner. Uh, and then we have Zap. I'll dig into each one of them and explain in need. So let's go to Chimera scanner. So Chimera scanner is a cloud-based scanner. Um, we, what we do is uh, we have opened up a portal for partners to log in. And we run a bunch of open source uh, scanning tools for you. Uh, we then give you an actionable report with all the vulnerabilities that are found and give you one action report where you can download it, look at it, and also we have remediations of how to fix it. Uh, all, these, uh, uh, all these scanners run on Heroku and it's powered by Salesforce. Uh, this is only available for partners. Uh, so. For customer, if, if you are a customer and you want to run any of these tools, uh, we'll be talking about Zap, which you can run for your own org. So Chimera Scanner has these uh, open source solutions built in. We have Zap. Zap is a general web application scanner. It helps you find uh, web application vulnerabilities like cross-site scripting, uh, SQL, in, uh, 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 SQL injection, and all other kind of vulnerabilities. Nikto is similar to Zap. Uh, but it is not as uh, uh, it, it, it doesn't find as many issues as that. But it is a quick scanner which finds web vulnerabilities in your uh, uh, in your uh, website. Uh, there's SSL Liz, uh, which is an SSL vulnerability scanner. It finds any SSL kind of issues that you have for if you're implementing HTTPS on a website, then it kind of digs into that and finds anything. Um, Nmap is a port scanner. Uh, it, it looks at all the open ports that you have. And then if it finds something that might look suspicious or if it might have an uh, HTTP endpoint, it feeds that output back to Zap. And Zap will run the scan again. Uh, apart from these open source solutions, we also have some uh, inbuilt solutions like SSL fingerprinting and web application fingerprinting to give you some context regarding your scans. Uh, for to prevent abuse, we want we want to make sure that uh, whenever you're running Chimera Scan against your website, you own that website. To do that, we ask you to download a uh, abuse token and upload it to your website. That way, we can verify that you own the website and we're only scanning the websites that you own and not something that's on the internet. So this is the Chimera Scanner. I'm going to show you a quick demo of that. So it's similar to source scanners portal. Uh, you have the pending scans. You have the completed scans. Um, in this case, you don't have anything like credits. You can run, run as many scans you want. Uh, then if you want to run a scan, you basically download the abuse prevention token that you have, upload it in your website, then give the URL of the website that you have. Uh, if you have certain pages that it should not scan, maybe the logout page, then you can uh, put that in the do not scan list. Uh, then you give us a username password, a test username password that we can you feed it to Chimera, feed it to Zap, so that it can log in and scan your website. Once you have completed, once once the scan has been completed, similar to Source Scanner Portal, you will get an email. Uh, you can log back into the Chimera Portal and download the results. The results will be comprehensive. It's going to show all the vulnerabilities you have. We have. Uh, uh, done a test scan for a test website, which is a vulnerable application that's out on the internet. So it has found multiple issues. So you can dig into each one of these issues and look at what are what is the issue description, 
if there's any reference links that are there, but you can go and go and look at what exactly this issue means, and also some remediation steps of how to fix this vulnerability. It also shows you what ex uh, how how the traffic looks in the HTTP request and response, and shows you where the payload was uh, kind of given. So this is really useful um, if you if you are a partner and you want to scan your partner application. So let's say you're a customer and uh, you you want to run a web a scan against your own website, which is not Salesforce, but it's it's your own uh, custom developed website. Then we have uh, Zad, uh, Zap Scanner. Zap is an uh, open source tool that is developed by OWASP. Uh, it, it, it does a bunch of scanning for you. It finds a lot of security vulnerabilities which you can remediate and also it gives a good report for you to go and download and look at what kind of vulnerabilities are out there. Uh, it, is, it can be used for both automated scan. That means you can just tell, give it a username password, give it a URL. It will do the spidering of the website and give all the issues. Or you can do manual testing. Uh, and give it to your QA people or your security folks who can then use this uh, to perform uh, any security testing needed. Uh, one last thing we want to talk about is uh, since we have two different portals for partners, we want to combine everything together. Uh, and we're going to be releasing partner security portal in a month from now. It will have both. Awesome, thank you. Uh, it will have both the source scanner portal and the camera portal. We'll be adding more and more features for partners. Uh, it, we will be adding office hours. That's our next something in, in our agenda. But we have other plans to make it more comprehensive. Uh, keep a lookout for that. We'll be uh, some, maybe in a month from now, you'll, you'll get notification about that. Uh, as I told you, it's a centralized portal. Uh, you can log into, you, you look, log into the portal using your partner uh, uh, partner login, and uh, we'll have office hours into it. Um, yeah, these are the various links. Uh, if you have missed any of taking photos of any of the links, and also these slides will be on the Dreamforce website after this. So yeah, you, if you want to check out any of the scanners that we spoke about today, these are the links that you can go to. And uh, these are some other reference uh, docs that we have for any of the material we had today. Um, this is the last talk of our security series. But yeah, we are at the security booth um, in the developer forest area. If you have any questions, uh, if, if you can't ask it now, if you have any questions later, you can come by and ask us. All the talks that we have will be recorded and be posted on the Dreamforce website. That's pretty much it.